steady to pick up something. I was picking up something forever. <laughs> was anybody else in there with you in the lab? No, 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 no. But if they would have came in, they would have like smelled uh, Lysol and remnants of my heart. <laughs> Lysol. <laughs> All right, everybody. Welcome to Hot Couch Potato, the podcast where we talk about video games and downloading video games. My name is Brent, a.k.a. Booop. I'm here with my man's Rick, a.k.a. A New Perfect Day. What's going on, man? I think I'm getting sick, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to trace it back to where, what happened, and I was like reading that it happens within 24 to 72 hours, and I was like, okay, me and Eric's throat started feeling like kind of dry, but it just affected me more today, and I was like, backtrack and i was like okay so i had i shared a drink with a couple of my my family members i was like mm, maybe it might be that but that's too fast and then i rewind and i me and Eric tried um this burger from carl's jr uh-huh um well you guys ate the do, same burger yeah do well not the exact exact same burger oh, but yeah, the same type say. but do not try <laughs> carl's jr's new famous star What's, it's, I forgot it was called like new branded famous star burger or something like that. What's new about it? It's horrible. That's what's new. Wait, what? But, <laughs> 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 but no, no, you got. <coughs> oh god, that's the after effects. <coughs> but you got to try it, <coughs> or don't try it. Wait. Okay. Yeah, I'm rewinding. There's I'm a rewinding. new famous star at uh, Carl's Jr. and don't get it. Yeah, so you know, we think it would be good, good, a good burger or new brand burger or whatnot. On I don't know, like homemade or something. Okay, but think of a raw burger. Okay, but it feels very synthetic and it chews very soft. Ooh. So and then it tastes super like. Pickle, not pickle, like sour pickles or something like that. Ooh. I tried liking it. I was like, you know what? You know, this is a very expensive. It's an expensive burger, by the way. It's $11 for the whole combo. Uh-huh. And we tried it. I took like half the burger. I ate half the burger, like forcing myself. You know what? You know, it's maybe it's my taste, taste buds or something <laughs> like that. And then I was like, you know what? I cannot eat this. This is the first time I'm going to have to actually throw away food. Uh-huh. And then Eric took a first bite. He put it down. He said, yep, nope, I'm not going to eat this. And I was like, damn it. Yeah, we wasted so much money. Oh so we ended God, up dude. getting like a Jack in a Box. And, uh-huh. or, I forgot what we got. But yeah, yeah. Wait. Yeah. Our burger. Is our burger. it like, because um, they have a different kind of patty there. It's like their $6 burger patty, I think. Is that what they put no, in no, it? No, 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 no. The $6 patty patty tastes like a burger yeah um the famous star tastes like rubber meat and stuff like that but <laughs> this i don't know what it tastes like like you put it on the bottom of your shoe and then you rub it on the floor a bit and then you <laughs> like cook it but don't cook it all the way you know you have to let it kind of like pinkish and then you can serve it to your customers and then we can rebrand it and call it a new, <laughs> a new famous star <laughs> Gross, dude. Uh, let me look it up. I don't even know. I'm just like, I'm never going there again. But <laughs> basically, I'm like dying now. Damn. All right, dude. It could be uh, from me too, dude. Unfortunately, you did hang out with me on uh, oh, a couple of days ago. Oh, that's right. You are sick. So breathing the same air as me might have gotten you sick, dude. Unfortunately. Uh, that's cool. Uh, yeah, that's cool. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> hey, I bought you a free day off work or something, dude. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's called the Beyond Famous Star. My bad. Rewind. Beyond yeah. Famous Star. All right, re- read the description real quick. Beyond Introducing Famous Star. the Beyond Famous Star with cheese. The charbroiled Beyond Famous Star with cheese featuring 100% plant-based. Oh, it's plant-based. <laughs> Wait, it's vegetarian? It's a vegetarian burger that's Hmm. why dude (laughs) no wonder it tasted strange (laughs) (laughs) did you just get it because they were like oh it's brand new 
It's, yeah, it just said beyond famous. Dog. It just said oh nothing about being God. a 100% vegetarian plant burger, dude. Base. Oh my God. That's Why? fucking hilarious, dude. Uh, it even has a question. Why are the burgers red? And this is because the meat can be beyond the burger. The patty changes colors as you cook. <laughs> Damn. Uh, that's hilarious, actually. That's actually super hilarious, man. <laughs> Yeah, don't get that. That was a waste of There's actually money. a good spot uh, in Ocean Beach. I think maybe I've talked about it before, but uh, my sister, she's vegetarian, right? She always mm-hmm. goes to this place over in Ocean Beach where they do vegetarian burgers, but they're actually super good. Uh, they got this one called the, I don't know what they call it, but basically their food tastes like In-N-Out food, dude. Oceanside, you said? Mm-hmm. Okay, I know there's a place in Sunset Cliffs around that area, and yeah, it's really good. Like the chicken nuggets taste like chicken nuggets, but it's like made out of soy and stuff like that. So. Yeah, is it the one where like the drive-through isn't really a drive-through? It's just like the tablets on the outside. Exactly. Yeah, that place, yeah. dude. That place is actually really good vegetarian burgers. Uh, fast food vegetarian burgers? I don't know about that, man. <laughs> I don't know how they're trying to pull that shit off. Hundred <laughs> percent certified. Don't try it. Hundred <laughs> percent certified. There you go. Certified, dude. Hot couch potato certified. <laughs> That's fucking crazy, man. Um, but yeah, I guess lots happened this week, dude. Got into some new games this week, man. Uh, but first and foremost, dude, they announced a new Pokemon game, dude. Well, two Hell new yeah. Pokemon games. Uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield that are going to be out on the switch um which version are you going to buy and shield why is it gonna be wait what really I yeah i'm a the... shield guy don't you remember the I tank class the place? joke dude oh, oh, to oh make the okay joke rewind about. that rewind it <laughs> <laughs> what version are you buying and why is it gonna be sword but holy shit okay so you're gonna buy shield dude of course of course um i don't know if it matters of the starter types but did you hear how the whole internet is blowing up and print and like complaining and they don't want the one of the starters to be fighting what no fire yeah so like the whole internet's going crazy they're like i think they're emailing the developers and tweet uh tweeting about it and they're like please don't make the new one firefighting or Mm. something like that because I think it's Blaziken that's already firefighting the other mm. starter. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, the whole internet is like going in chaos just because of that. They're praying for, for it not to be a fighting. Oh, why well, are fight, fighting Pokemon kind of suck or what? I think they just want a different type of Pokemon other than fire and fighting kind of uh, thing. Ah, okay. You okay. know, like Charmander was like fire and. F- I guess fire. <laughs> I don't <laughs> think he was a dragon. <laughs> But, but, <laughs> oh no, I'm dying from the burger. <coughs> Don't get the burger. <laughs> but, okay, I see that. If it's been done before for a different starter, then where's Blaziken from? Which which Pokemon is that one from? I think, um, the third, second one. I don't even remember. I have to like pull up my Pokedex. Oh, that's the one. Okay, that's so crazy. Because you know how we've been playing Pokemon Go? This is a Pokemon yeah. I have in Pokemon Go, uh, but I just don't care for the names. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. From Sun and Moon, I think it is from. Um, oh, no, no. He's from Hoenn. There you go. Oh, Hoenn. There you go. There you go. It's the little chicken. So he that's a yeah. fighting type. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they can't do that. But then again, there's there's got to be a thousand <laughs> Pokemon in existence by now, dude. So... I think 750 or something like that. Unique like, Pokemon is the count? Yeah. Let me double check. Yeah. Well, even Ellen so, yeah. Pokemon. 750 Pokemon in existence. Okay. Unique Pokemon. All their evolutions. 807. 807. Yeah. They got to start running out of types, dude. No, they just need to stop making new ones. <laughs> <laughs> After the true, 150 actually. and the... <laughs> added the extra hundred i was like okay i'm like kind of done you know yeah. losing count and, and you know it's cool but it's like how can you live in a world where you haven't recognized 
any of those types of Pokemon. And Ash is still 10, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, she's uh, still 10, dude. Well, I mean, it kind of makes sense. The, the different parts of the world, there's different animals and stuff. So different leagues or different continents in the Pokemon world, there's different kinds of animals. But enough where they're all, like, can fight and have moves that are effective against each other. That, that's way too crazy, dude. I mean, yeah, are there even 807 species of animals in the world, dude? Like, recognizable ones? Uh, probably. They're, like, probably variants of, like, one specific type of bird I was gonna say, or something yeah, like that. There's probably, like, 807 kinds of finches or something like that, but... Yeah. Yeah, there's only, like, really two kinds of gorillas, and I think there's five gorilla types of Pokemon out right now, right? Yeah. So, huh. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe they need to stop making new Pokemon and just combine all of the Pokemon into one game, dude. 8.7 million species. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> We're fucking way off. Really totally wrong, dude. <laughs> <laughs> then how the hell Then how the hell are Pokemon creators running out of ideas, dude? Just copy some of the animals. Like, face by face, <laughs> dude. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what they're doing. Like, some of them, I can see the Pokemon are, like, super lazy drawn. I'm like, dude, you just gave up on naming them too you know <laughs> yeah yeah i also saw this article that was talking about how um the pokemon the new starters look like the powerpuff girls dude oh uh, yeah yeah <laughs> it's kind of right dude it's a little bit crazy but who knows <laughs> yeah and then people are like really begging the the developers to release on the ps4 as well and i was like <laughs> what that is a long shot for you guys i'm sorry but yeah, yeah it's like a lot of japanese twitters is just like begging the developers they're like please i've been so faithful and blah 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 and just release it i don't have my 3ds and yeah please i'm like oh okay it's still nintendo yeah, so I, know. I don't know man that is a long shot for real Th that just speaks to how popular the playstation 4 is now in japan i guess huh yeah but i mean at the same time japan is like the home of handheld consoles dude like, they take that shit out on the train everywhere with them. I'm surprised people wouldn't have uh, Switches like that. Because is this coming out on 3DS or just on Switch? I think on just Switch. Because looking at the graphics, it's mm -hmm. kind of pretty heavy intensive. Yeah. And that's what happened with Let's Go. It looks like Let's Go, but more detailed. And that's why I'm pretty excited. It's because the environment, you know, it's just like pretty crazy just looking at the the buildings and how the way that you encounter uh, pokemon in the wild mm -hmm. and let's go eevee they're all running about so you know you can easily dodge them and stuff like that so mm -hmm. but this one you know you see the girl crawling through the grass and then pikachu shows up and i'm like dude that's where you that's, battle yeah that's and and and, and they battle. It looked like they battled to capture. And that's what I missed too. And let's go Eevee, Pikachu. They, you don't battle. You just throw the Pokemon. And then you do battle certain species like the legendaries. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then you go and capture them. But I just remember the old nostalgia where you have to kind of get them to the, like the, their smallest HP possible without you know making them faint. Mm -hmm. Then you can like try to capture it. But I don't know. That was a game in itself. Yeah, that was a completely uh, different game from all the traditional Pokemon games, man. Um, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm excited too. It looks like you said a lot more realistic, just the way you interact with the world, and it's not like chibi type artwork. You know what I mean? Everybody's yeah. like short with big ass heads and stuff like that. I yep. think that's how it was in um, Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu as well, right? People were a lot more. I guess normal sized, uh, yeah, with their heads and stuff and everything, and I guess just the uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. I guess they just look more like normal people, so that's cool. Um, but yeah, no, that'll be exciting. My biggest question is: Do you think we'll be able to move the camera with the left joystick with the right joystick, dude? The camera, yeah, like you think it's gonna be a, like a traditional 
third person adventure game where you can you know use dual joysticks one to run around one to look around oh or do you think it's just gonna be around? like yeah same old pokemon where it's kind of mm-hmm. like isometric view and the camera just follows whichever way you run around uh not sure i'm gonna actually check out the trailer right now because let's go eevee it was stationary camera so you like run left and right up and down mm-hmm. but you know still kept that top down uh look from the old games mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so yeah that's interesting if it's going to be looking left and right because then that means they would have to be more detailed with the environment you mm-hmm. know Mm-hmm. If you have to look at the sky, look at that, because you you can't really look at the sky and let's go Eevee or the mountains in the background. You uh, really can look at what's visually, you know, there. Just that in that screen. direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess that's true. And I guess that's a way that you can kind of cheat uh, your graphic system is you, you don't have to make a, a sky box, really, you know, that people are going to look up into. You just yep. have to make you know, the ground and all the paths that you're walking. Um, But yeah, let me know when you were watching that trailer, because there are some shots in the trailer that do show the sky, I think. And at least it's a different angle than the traditional Pokemon. I think some are more, um, what's the word here, like level with the character that's running around. It's not from an elevated level, you know? Yeah. Kind of more uh, on the ground with them, so... I don't know. That's that's kind of my only hope. That's the only thing that's separating Pokemon from a, a good game to a great game is having that ability to just, you know, I, freedom I, of the camera. I think it look may kind of look like like right now in the trailer, it doesn't show that they're moving the camera at all. But mm-hmm. then one small scene is the girl running into the mines. Mm hmm. And you can see slightly the camera's moving left and right. Uh-huh. So it might be where you can like control what direction the camera is. Like you remember like Dark Cloud or that game. Oh, yeah. 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 So, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. And I guess he's the camera's turning around him. Yeah. Yeah. Because in the beginning of the trailer, too, when I guess they're just showing off the character in their room, you know, and they uh-huh. have like their backpack and stuff on and everything like that. The camera's rotating around them. So... They have the ability, you know, they have the detail in the world like you were talking about to kind of have that. Um, so, I don't know. I think it would feel more, feel like a better game if you had that, you know, move the camera around with the with the right joy, joystick, dude. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, that would be a 10 out of 10 game for me, man. It would be a real game. <laughs> <laughs> and then you just oh just imagining how you could throw out your pokemon to do abilities for you you know oh there's a rock in the way you know throw out snorlax move that shit snorlax moves it out of the way put it back in the pokeball keep moving and doing your thing dude yeah oh, i can't wait man dude um, yeah but yeah it looks super good i think it's based off of uh a map of england or something like that so you travel all the way to the north in it and there's just like castles and all kinds of villages and shit that you travel through. So should be a good game, man. I can't wait. It's been, you know what? I haven't played a Pokemon game since Red and Blue, honestly. I think I played a little bit of Gold and Silver, man. But uh-huh. like you said, once there was new Pokemon, I wasn't really into it. After spending all that time catching the original 150. 150. Dude, yeah. I just didn't have it in me to do anything else. <laughs> <laughs> but... Yeah, dude, I'm definitely going to pick this one up. I successfully, you know, dodged Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu. So kind of overdue <laughs> for a new Pokemon game, man. I think it'll be cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just hope um, you can be able to trade your Pokemon Go Pokemon over into the new games. So mm. my cousin, I was talking to my cousin today, too, about it. And he was like, he has so many pokemons from i think moon and sun and all that and to the point where like half of them or not half like a good amount of his pokemon are like perfect iv and and he's like wondering he's like will you be able to trade from 3ds to to switch and i was like that's a good question you know like because there's a lot of people who are on handheld you know been playing all pokemon games religiously and been transferring all their pokemon from you know from each generation pokemon all the way up why not you know that'd Mm. be pretty sick because then now you're forcing people to go and buy a switch you know the people that 
don't want to buy one because they have the 3ds but if they're gonna have that switch and have that function then sales are gonna boost like crazy mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah the switch was already one of the highest selling consoles ever but i totally didn't know that you're telling me that if you caught a pokemon in one game you could transfer it to one of the other games uh that's how it worked you know like transfer backwards compatibility kind uh -huh. of thing uh -huh. so they transfer back and forth from you know old games to the new generation kind of thing mm -hmm. and i was like yeah in let's go eevee uh you only can transfer between your phone pokemon go and you know as long as you reach like three-fourths of the game which is mm -hmm. the fuchsia city and i was like but I'm not sure. Like maybe with this new game coming out, they may be able to let you transfer between Go and the 3DS. Cause why not? You know, mm -hmm. like that would be pretty sick to do. And you know what it means? More plugins, dude. You'll have to get a new like little link cable for your 3DS <laughs> and your Switch, dude. <laughs> That's a more money for Nintendo. They'll charge fucking eighty dollars for a little wire dude <laughs> <laughs> i don't think we talked about that here man but i my dream you know or not my dream but like a convenience would just be to have like two or three switch docks right in your house for just as many however many tvs you have in your house uh -huh. so that you know you can pick up your switch you know if you're in your bedroom and you're like playing your switch taking it out to the kitchen while you're heating something up for breakfast and you've done eating breakfast. So you want to put the switch on the living room TV. Oh, look, I have a dock over there. Let me drop that into the dock and you're playing there. Oh, let me go back to uh, the bedroom. Boom. I'm playing in my bedroom now on the dock in my bedroom, but nope. Yeah. Nope. Dude. <laughs> Nintendo doesn't want you to do that. Well, they do want you to do that, but they want <laughs> you to pay 70 bucks per dock, dude. Holy shit. Does, do the wires even come with the dock, dude? <coughs> um, I think so. I don't think it comes with the power cord. But oh shit! Yeah, I was <coughs> looking at it at uh, Starbucks uh -huh. or Starbucks <laughs> Target, uh -huh. and I was like, dude, would I want to pick this up? Because if I'm like too busy playing from the living room and I want to go in the bedroom and play, that. It's pretty sick to do, you know, just go from dock to dock or area to area. Mm -hmm. And then I had a stupid idea. I was like, maybe I'll put one TV, small TV in the bathroom kind of thing. And I was like, All right, I'm getting way ahead of myself because that is way too much money. It's like 60 something dollars. You're uh -huh. saying 70 bucks. And I was like, yeah, that's not a sale to me. Yeah. If it costs way above 50 plus dollars. Yeah, that shit doesn't make sense. And I think you were the one that was telling me about that too. Like the ones, um, there's third party ones, of course, and they're way, way cheaper, of course. But they've known they've been known to brick your your Nintendo Switch or just completely make them not work, dude. Yeah, that's what that's killing me. I was like, dude, I really want to get the one with the GameCube adapter dock. Mm. I was like, oh, that is hella gonna be sick. You know, I can just bring that everywhere. You know, when we travel or like go to packs or something, you know, I can just bring that dock. But when I was reading the reviews, it's possibly can break your switch because people are using those third party apps and or the third party uh, stuff. And I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna stick with Nintendo. You know, everything Nintendo, even the Joy Cons mm -hmm. Nintendo, mm -hmm. because that's uh, you know, I I, I don't know. Oh, and it does come with uh, cables, both cables. Oh, okay. That's good There's one at Walmart for $65. Oh, my God, dude. That's still a lot of money. And the only, <laughs> yeah, see, and the only reason that sounds reasonable is because it's normally $70 or like $69.99, dude. That's crazy. Dude, yeah, it, it, they have it at $90, $89.99. Normal price, dude? Yeah, $90? normal price. Hell no. Oh, my so. God, dude. Oh, this just makes me shudder to think someone paying that much. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine that's how you know someone's rich? They have more than like two Switch docks. <laughs> <laughs> that's so crazy, man. That's so crazy. Uh, but yeah, nah, man. Pokemon coming out. It's going to be good. Um, do they say a release date on that? Is it this year? Mm, I don't know. Maybe this year? I'm not sure. We'll find out at E3. Oh, yeah, that's true. And Nintendo will actually be there, unlike Sony. 
Um, but dude, <laughs> when do you think we'll hear anything from Sony, man? Uh, probably during their <coughs> conference that they they try to have every year, uh, their own little Tokyo Game Show kind of thing, and uh, maybe they might announce something like hint, sneak peek at E3, and then do everything on their own. And I hope they they bring it back down to Anaheim because I have a feeling that they were underwhelmed or. I don't know. They didn't receive a lot of good feedback from last year's in Anaheim, and so they maybe got butt hurt and went off to a different area. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it seemed like there were a lot of people there, like actually at the at the convention. Well, shit, it was two years ago now, two thousand seventeen. Yeah, um, I think then there was a lot of people, but maybe the feedback wasn't what they were expecting. Because, uh-huh. like, remember the the whole uh conference and people were like yawning and they're like bored out of their minds oh and, yeah, yeah you know they said uh yeah pick up the fish put the fish in the thing take out the gun kill the guy at that one demo yeah. um that android that was pretty funny dude, you know what's funny though that was easily the best part of that conference dude <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah it was. For that little show because the rest of it was boring them <laughs> they didn't set the expectations uh correctly for that i don't think everybody was expecting what it was like uh the year before you know with all those game announcements and stuff yeah what we got was just something completely different dude um but yeah i don't know man i'm kind of scared because it's about the right time i guess it's the end of the playstation 4's life cycle so they're really putting together everything for the playstation 5 you know just getting not ready for yet i just got ps4 pro <laughs> <laughs> but no they have to be getting ready i mean the last games that are coming out are maybe last of us 2 uh what's the other one what's the other big one ghost of tsushima and uh what the fuck is that game called the one by kojima uh see we already forgot death stranding death stranding see i mean they only have those three games that they have to release and they they've shown that off for the past two years already you know what i'm saying yeah if they do that for two more years yeah people will get bored so i think they don't want to show off what they're doing for the playstation 5 yet and that's what they have up their sleeve unfortunately so that's why they're gonna be quiet for a little bit um but I'd rather them do that, you know, be quiet for a little bit than just unleash their load onto everybody at once, dude. Yeah. Um, I think that'd be good. What's that other game? The one where you're a biker? Uh, Days Gone. Has that game come out yet? Uh, I'm not sure. I thought that game was, is that game coming out in March? What's it? Oh, saying? this year, April 26th. Oh, April. Okay. Okay. So that's coming out soon. That's another game that's been like uh shown or been at E3 for the past 2 or 3 years. So that's good that that's coming out. <laughs> um a game that's coming out already that's I'm excited for, dude. Sekiro is coming out oh, in like 2 yeah. weeks, dude. Do you realize that? Dude, two weeks? That's crazy. And we're going to get the letter opener, so that's going to be pretty sick. You know, <laughs> Just have a samurai letter opener. I might even bring that to work. And be like, Sir, you have a weapon on you? I'm like, no, no, no. It's, it's office supplies. <laughs> office supplies, dude. It's a letter opener. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, shit. That's crazy, man. But, yeah, no, I'm, I'm really excited for that, even though it's going to be a little bit different from normal uh bloodborne slash dark souls type gameplay i think it's gonna be sick dude oh yeah because it's... Or did you pre-order it online or how are you gonna get yours from gamestop right yeah <laughs> so yeah this letter over that rick's talking about is a pre-order bonus from gamestop <laughs> you can actually get it shipped to you really so, yeah I'd rather uh, just pick it up from the store. I have a because that's what I'm worried about. You know, going to the store and they're like, "Oh yeah, sorry, we ran out of whatever bonus." Because I had that one time, and what? I don't remember what game it was, but you pre-order something, and you know, you expect to get that pre-order thing, and they say, "Oh yeah, sorry, we ran out," kind of thing, and mm. that kind of traumatized me. And I don't remember what game it was, but it traumatized me to the point where like 
I had to either line up, be one of the first people to line up, or either, I don't know, try to find out how to get it a different way. So No way, dude. So wait, how did you... So you just didn't get it at all? Yeah, whatever item it was, I don't... I think it might have been Dead or Alive. I don't remember. It was so way back. But yeah. after that point, every time I pre-ordered a game, I would always be like one of the first kind of people to actually go and pick it up to make mm-hmm. sure I have that supply. Because it's usually while supplies last and they have that in the fine print. And I hate that, you know? Oh, shit. Huh. So you think if they deliver it to you, that you won't be part of that? supplies that don't last exactly <laughs> because i think they're a whole chain uh differently you know like there, uh, there's an online portion store and then there's the actual stores that only get like 10 and then the, maybe the gamestop employees keeps half of them for themselves kind of thing so uh-huh. I, I don't know huh interesting yeah no i'll probably pick mine up in store dude and I was just funny. Who sent the text? Was it either you or Anthony that sent the text? It's like, I hate GameStop, but I might have to pre-order this. for. Oh, that was me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have to pre-order this girl just for the Samurai Sword uh, letter opener, dude. <laughs> dude, yeah, because I always get my games digitally, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to have to actually go back to GameStop to get this damn letter opener. <laughs> I was willing to pay 20 bucks for a Katana letter opener um, that I saw online. It was uh-huh. Gonna ship from Japan, but it got like shitty reviews. Uh-huh. I was like, "Yeah, I think I was about to actually pick that up." But then when I saw this, I was, like, "You know what? Thank you, thank you. <laughs> you, saved me. you saved me money and time." Yeah, that's fucking hilarious, dude. Um, but yeah, no, I'm super excited for this game, man. Because everything I see about it is just, you know, it, it's gonna be different, um, different in the way that Bloodborne was different from Dark Souls. So. Uh, and I jumped on the Bloodborne first before getting even into the Dark Souls game. So seeing how they can improve on the gameplay of of uh, Bloodborne is going to be great. I mean, you could fucking jump in this game, dude. You have a grappling hook and shit, man, in this game. So I, I'm excited, dude. Um, the only thing that has me kind of scared is I was never good at parrying in uh, Dark Souls, dude. Uh-huh. Bloodborne, I'm okay, you know. I'm just okay because I could stand super far away and shoot the gun. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, but Dark Souls, I'm kind of trash at it, um, and I know that's going to be a huge mechanic in this game. Um, a lot of it seems like, you know, really you only hit the boss like once, or like you only actually hit something once to kill it. You know, your whole fight with an enemy is just you. Uh, parrying swords you know and breaking down each other's concentration or whatever that meter is and then when you actually attack them that's the killing blow that's not their health going down that's their poise or concentration going down um so that's what i'm scared of dude and i'm just gonna super suck at this game (laughs) because my timing is gonna be horrible dude (laughs) no man you're gonna evolve to the point where you can parry life you can parry bullets (laughs) shit man were you ever good at parrying in dark souls hell no like i i used to actually tempt it because i was frustrated that my cousin he was super good uh-huh. you know john raymond uh-huh. and he was like oh yeah just right when you see it at this iframe rate you know you just press the, the parry button and i would do it and i would die like 50 times i was like yep nope i'm never ever gonna try a parrying <laughs> i'm gonna parry with a stupid shotgun where you know like infinitely shoot the shotgun uh-huh. to parry so yeah this one i'm like Okay, maybe I'll get my timing right this time and actually see like a samurai when it's going to hit my face. <laughs> if not, then <laughs> it's another Demon Souls game. <laughs> I know. We'll be doing a lot of dodging, dude. A lot of running around in circles around this guy. <laughs> but it looks like, too, maybe there's there's more than just um, pairing with your sword, you know, you have, there's, uh, from the trailer, there's that fire arm attachment. So you could shoot fire to stun your enemy, or you can use the grappling hook to stun your enemy and stuff. So maybe there's more than just pairing swords. You can use other types of tricks or something to stun your enemy to open up for an attack. You know what? I think you were actually pretty good too at pairing. Do you remember, um, Neo? 
Weren't you oh, good at you? Oh, yeah. No, that was just against the one boss, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and that was because it was the boss, uh, the ghost on the bridge, the guy with the big ass axe that was just on the bridge, dude. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. No, it was just him, dude. I would just parry him because he had like the same attack all the time, dude. <laughs> Dude, John Raymond, again, was really good at that. He was, like, telling me how to, to parry and backstab him. I was like, dude, there's no way. I'm just going to spam on shurikens from far away. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it wasn't until uh, I learned your technique, dude, with the chain. Oh, the trippy eye. feet? Yeah. <laughs> Shooting people and shit, dude, that I dude. knew the way. <laughs> Hell yeah, when we were fighting a three man boss fight or whatever, three uh-huh. bosses at the same time, uh-huh. and we would like trip two and run away and go like fighting the one <laughs> guy. The one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, my favorite one, dude, was you know, there's a you use a weapon and then you get a proficiency with it in Neo, right? Uh, and then once you reach a certain proficiency with that weapon, you could fight. There's like what five weapons, right? There's a spear, axe, hammer, a katana, double katana, or maybe six, and then the chain and kunai, and then you can gain a proficiency with that. Once you get to a certain level with a weapon, then you could challenge the master, and then after challenging the master, if you beat them, I think you get a special equip or a special piece of armor or something like that, dude. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, the hardest fight I forgot. Was maybe the dual katana guy was pretty hard, and the hammer guy was pretty hard. The easiest fight for me was the chain and kunai because of the trippy techniques, man. <laughs> I just did that all day, and he had no answer, dude. I was like, There's no way. The master of the chain and kunai has to know a counter for this. And he nope. did it, dude. I was annihilating him. As soon as I got close to him, I just tripped him and killed him, dude. <laughs> stomping on him man. stomping on him and then you run away and just repeat <laughs> <laughs> oh, this shit is so broken dude that game is funny man uh but yeah so Sekiro's coming out soon even sooner though i think this friday man uh devil may cry is coming out um you've kind of been a fan of the series right or you haven't played it for a while uh yeah i have not played devil may cry for I think I stopped at number four. Uh, that was like the latest one, and then they remade it. Double five is the new one, right? The yeah, one that's yeah. coming out, yeah. But I don't know. It's like they re—they did it again. They reimagine it, or yeah. they redid it, and I'm like, yeah. I miss number one because it was like Devil May Cry. You felt like. You don't know what's going on around the corner. And it even had the Devil May Cry camera angles. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it doesn't like follow you. It actually, it's like stationary. So that's what I like, really missed uh, about Devil May Cry. And now it's like you're super cocky and, and things like that. And mm-hmm. I'm like, uh, I don't know. That's a turn off for me. Like we were, we were about bounty hunters or demon, you know, f- fighting demons, but now it's just about how flashy you can pull off a move kind of thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, well, that's more than me, man. The last one I played, I think, was Devil May Cry 2. And 2 was horrible, I think, dude, wasn't it? Wasn't 2 the one that was just super trash? Super flashy. He was super serious. It wasn't even Dante. And, yeah. And I remember yeah. after the first one, I was like, okay, yeah, I'm not going to play Devil May Cry anymore, man. So I think that's what <laughs> made me stop playing. But I forgot that we played... Or I think I played like one year when we went to Comic Con. Uh, there was a Capcom booth, and they had one of the um, uh, Devil May Cry games there. It was new at the time, and that one was super good. It might have been four because that might have been the next one to come out. Um, but four was good, or four wasn't that good. I think four was good mm-hmm. in itself, like mm-hmm. as a good solid game. But I don't know, like still. I liked one the best. The best I think yeah. four, I would give it like an 8.5. Yeah. The story was really good, but I don't know. I don't know. And then number five is, I think he gains his arm. Oh, no, he has a mechanical arm or something like that. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I th- my cousin is really hyped for it because it's similar to number three. 
Mm. Uh, I, I don't know if you played three, but three mm-hmm. is where he's like more wild and more crazy. And you're doing like all of these combos and while rotating all of your weapons at the same time. Oh, shit. So, yeah, it becomes more flashy in a sense. Uh, it's not your traditional Resident Evil where you're going around. Uh, you only have one weapon and you have to press start to change Just your weapon. Weapons, kind of yeah. 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 The Devil May Cry, you get like different styles too, right? Of like how you want to use your weapons as well. I think that's what I remember. There's like a, uh, or maybe it is the weapons. Like there's a heavy weapon and then uh, there was like a bigger sword and then a smaller sword that was more agile or something. Yeah, um, yeah. I was, have we talked about that before? How hard that first boss in Devil May Cry is? Maybe he's not the first boss, but he's one of like the most memorable. That stone tarantula scorpion thing, dude. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, was that guy hard? He was like ridiculously hard for dude, no reason. Dude, all of them were pretty hard. <laughs> That's what I liked. You know, it's like <laughs> you felt mortal, but then now with these new bosses, you felt like, oh, okay, you're the shit. You can do anything. Nothing sure. scares you. So, yeah, I don't know. It, it felt awesome. And then he was cocky, but good. He was yeah. at a good cocky. He was like. Oh yeah, I'm gonna squash you like an ant. And he's like, Oh yeah, I'm gonna kick your butt or I'll squash you kind of thing. So Yeah. Things like that I miss. They changed it. So you think that they they're just it. like revamping it all over again in this they, fifth I, one? They because yeah, they tried to before, right? With when they just made a DMC, DMC or something where there was like yeah. a young Dante. Yeah. With a reboot and he's like a rocker looking guy. And yeah. I was like, Yeah, I guess it's cool, but Still, he's not my Dante <laughs> yeah. kind of guy. <laughs> I feel that. That's crazy, man. Um, I don't know. We'll see. It, it looks interesting. I'm not saying I'm not gonna pick it up, but it looks like a a good game, dude. I think I for me that's not as married to it. Who really only has knowledge of like the first two. I, I think I'm in the future. I might buy it. It looks like a cool game just to mess around with. Um, I always remember forgetting I had guns in that game, dude. Like, I would yeah. just use the sword, and I'm like, oh, wait, that thing only has two health left. Do, do, do. And then that's it. <laughs> yeah. And it's so, usually your panic button, too. Like, the gun. if you, yeah, if your health is low and you're like, you want to keep them away, it would stun them. So you just keep firing away at them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny, dude. Um, But yeah, so no, big games coming up. That, that we might actually buy. We haven't bought the Anthem yet <laughs> because they haven't improved it too much yet, but those games we might actually buy. Um, I've actually, what, what games have you been playing this week, man? <clears throat> so, I've actually, you know, been listening. Dustin was telling me how him and Kat uh, were playing Tetris 99, and I was like... You know what? I'm not going to get that game because I don't know. Like, I'm not that com- competitive when it comes to Tetris. And when it gets, like, at a certain speed, mm-hmm. like, I cannot keep up at all. Like, I, I just can barely keep keep up at past level 5 speed or something like that. Mm-hmm. And then they're saying, oh, yeah, they're Kat was playing online and we're, like, listening. And I was like, oh, man, she got level 20. I was like, oh, man, that's great. That's awesome, you know. And then she was getting closer and closer. And then I forgot what it was. Oh, Eric. Eric says, oh, yeah, I, I was trying Tetris 99 too. And I was like, yep, you're not going to get me sold into it. <laughs> and then he was like, but it's free. And I was like, mother sucker. You know what? I'm going to download it just to <laughs> show that I am not good at this game. Uh-huh. And then when I played my first match, I got ranked 8 out of like 99, 99 people. people. <laughs> and shit. I was like... Holy shit, man. Tetris this, this God, is dude. fucking way addicting because it's like that power and the adrenaline and it's like scary, you know, because first, I, I don't care about the people. Like, I was just so focused on making sure, like, everything was clear. And then you can hear in the background the music was, like, getting faster and faster. And I was just, like, starting to sweat. And I was like, oh, my, okay. <laughs> so it was pretty awesome. The second time I played, I got rank 13. And I was like, you know what? You know, I'm averaging, I guess, okay. Uh-huh. And then the third time I played, I got ranked 71. I was oh like, yeah, God. that, not that a God solidified. Anymore. Yeah. Not a God anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that solidified me. I was like, yeah, that's good. So, yeah. That's it's, wild. It's a pretty dude. fun game. See, I, I didn't even know it was free. 
So while we were beginning this podcast, I totally downloaded Tetris 99. And I'm going to play my first game here soon. <laughs> dude, we'll you're going to get I'm like level one. <laughs> a Tetris God or not, dude? Nah, dude. I'm, I'm going to get 99. <laughs> <laughs> my first game, dude. I'm just gonna be the first one to get knocked out. Just not gonna know. How do you choose who to attack? You don't. So basically, you just your goal is to clear, you know, all the lines and stuff. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, if you clear slow and you don't clear fast enough, uh, on the left, people who've been clearing their lines fast, um, it will randomly go to you. And on the side, you can see like a bunch of lines are starting to build up. Mm. And I think you have like, I don't know, like 10 seconds or something like that to actually clear um, what you have in order to keep up. And if you don't, it's going to add all those blocks, all those lines onto your stuff. So it can add up pretty fast. So if you, as long as you can keep, uh, what do you call it? I don't know. Like you, you know, I have that, that line block. Oh yeah. Yeah. And you clear like that much consistently. That's how I was able to rank like pretty yeah, high. Yeah. Um, but when I that match when I played the got ranked seventy one or something, I was only clearing line one at a time, and uh, that didn't help at all. Like yeah. everything was stacking up really fast from the other players. So it, it it's pretty fun to to actually play. I bet you're gonna get addicted. Yeah, you like hit I level. probably will. It'll get to that point where I one time I think I played Tetris so much it got to that point where you know you close your eyes, you can see the Tetris pieces falling there. <laughs> yeah. Definitely, yeah, definitely played Tetris too much in, in, at one point in my life, man. <laughs> <laughs> but that's crazy. So then it's it's random, then you can't really say, Oh, I want to attack. You know, if we were in a game together, I can't say, Oh, I want to send all the, these blocks to Rick, it just goes to random people. I think there's some sort of algorithm too. Mm. like if you haven't cleared fast enough or you haven't cleared a certain amount well maybe you have a higher chance of getting more lines added up to your queue mm. but other than that that's just a guess uh it's random and you can't really attack anybody and you're you're, you're not even focused anywhere on looking at other players because if you like for a split second look away then you know stuff is going to add up real fast so. oh sure yeah. yeah, what helped me too is um, for every every item, uh, do that down, that, that speedy, I don't know, speedy drop or something like that. Drop it really fast. Mm -hmm. And that helps a lot too because there's other players you can see on the map that actually, you know, hold down and then it comes down like kind of slower than normal. Mm -hmm. So, yep. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, I've never played versus Tetris ever in my life. So it'll be interesting to see, dude. It's usually me against myself, you know, just playing, uh, putting it on level nine or something like that, and then just trying to get high <laughs> scores and shit. Um, well, yeah, that's too funny. Um, yeah, I didn't know it was free. So we're going to we're, we're gonna check it out, dude. Um, I've been playing this game on Steam, actually. So I bought a Humble Bundle a long time ago. Uh -huh. uh, for mainly for a couple of reasons. One was to get Stardew Valley and Starbound. <laughs> um those two games were part of this humble bundle, but also to play a prank on Rick and gift him a scary oh, game. Oh man, I yeah. forgot about that game. <laughs> <laughs> so now Rick just has this scary game in his Steam library that he'll Yeah, I don't know how to delete that shit. He'll, that he'll click, <laughs> you know, once in a while. Just because I gifted it to him. <laughs> so I was kind of sitting here in my room on what was that, Tuesday or so, and I was thinking, huh, I'm kinda bored, but I don't really want to play anything that I already have, you know. So I looked in the uh, in my humble bundle for all these games that I just hadn't redeemed yet, you know, and it's all like stuff that's independently uh, created, you know. There's like some bootleg uh, Sims games in there. There's some um, bootleg uh, Stardew Valley games and all kinds of shit like that in there. Um, but there was one game that caught my eye, and it's called uh, Shadow Run Returns. Is it called Shadow Run Returns? Yes, Shadowrun Shadow Returns. Run Returns. And it's like, I can explain this. It's like XCOM mixed with Dungeons and Dragons. And that's why I think I'm so addicted to it, dude. It's kind of weird. Man. What? Let me check this out. Shadowruns. Shadow like, what is it called? Shadowrun Returns. 
Shadow run return. Yeah, so it's an isometric view. Um, you get to create a character. So I created, and it's in like a steampunk kind of world, a futuristic, but at the same time, fantasy realm. So yeah, it's in a takes place kind of in the future, and there's what there's elves, dwarves, orcs, all these races and stuff in it. It has magicians, uh, people Dude, that can it looks summon amazing. shit. Yeah, it, it's kind of crazy. So, you know, I was going through this whole list of games I had on Humble Bundle watching trailers, and this one was the only one out of, like, the 20 games I have that caught my eye. It's crazy. <laughs> so I, I started playing it and got totally addicted. It's kind of cool because um, it starts out, you know, you can walk around uh, these towns, these settings freely. You can interact with characters and talk to them and stuff like that. And it plays out very much like um, a Dungeons & Dragons campaign where – you know, you talk to somebody and they say, oh, man, my store is getting robbed. Can you help me? And you could help them out. And then you could, like, take payment from them or whatever or um, refuse payment from them and get good karma or something like that. You know, there's, like, little uh -huh. side quests you can do. So far, it seems like, at least to me, the side quests kind of have no um, no consequences or anything. Uh, the game seems pretty linear, so it doesn't look like I can miss anything. Uh, but it's fun so far. I, the class I chose was a street ninja. So I'm just running around hitting people with a machete, dude. <laughs> 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 just super overpowered, man. Um, what have I done so far? So I think so far the story is I have to figure out why one of my old uh, adventurer buddies got killed. Um, and it looks like a serial killer killed him. So now I'm like, at the same time, the cops are investigating the serial killer. I'm looking for the serial killer, too. So it's like both of us clashing and at the same time looking around the city. It takes place in a futuristic Seattle. So there's like Pike's Place and all that kind of stuff. in there Oh, too. that's pretty sick. So it's kind of funny. Um, and then the combat in it is uh, turn based like XCOM, you know, like a real time strategy game. Uh, what else is it like? Like that Mario and Rabbids game? where you can uh -huh. uh, place your people and hide behind stuff. Like Final Fantasy Tactics, I guess, is the same thing, too. Um, but my guy, Street Ninja, all I do is just run up next to the enemy and just slash away with my fucking... <laughs> I have all these uh, abilities that just give me extra movement so I could just run really fast next to people and just slash away at them and shit, dude. So <laughs> it's good times, man. I figure I'm going to see how long it takes to... Uh, finish the game i think i'm two to three hours into it right now but i want to see how long it takes me to finish it and then i want to make a different character i think i want to make like a, a magician or something uh, so i could shoot fireballs and shit because uh, throughout the story uh, different characters jump in and help you you know and you could control them too they're on your team for the fight um, and i was using this one guy to help me out that could throw fireballs and shit he was op so i might have to make uh, a character that does that but no the game's pretty fun man just mm. little uh diamonds in the rough dude of my my humble bundle <laughs> that i never played dude <laughs> and speaking of there are a couple more scary games in that humble bundle so you might get a few more uh steam gifts from me man <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> what's that game even called that i gifted you dude i forgot yeah i'm not gonna remember <laughs> <laughs> all i know is all i can reject the gift what i did was i accidentally accepted the gift because i didn't know what it was and then that's when i saw it i was like mother suckers <laughs> <laughs> that's a picture of some girl's like face too it's kind of scary man <laughs> that's funny um but yeah dude so it's been good times. Also, it was uh, my birthday this past week, dude. Yeah, happy birthday. And for my birthday, I'm an old man, old, old man, forgetting <laughs> stuff. You know, It takes me like two weeks to get over sickness now, dude. It's fucking horrible, man. I don't wish it on anybody <laughs> getting old. Uh, but went out with uh, Rick and Eric, dude. And they said they had a gift for me, but not to keep my expectations high. So I thought they got me like a rock or something. I was like, oh, okay, cool, dude. Or they got me a picture of them eating <laughs> uh, or having a picnic in my front yard or something, you know, dude, <laughs> something. I wasn't expecting anything. And they gave me uh, Splatoon 2, dude. Honestly, Hell yeah. Man. More stress. And <laughs> holy shit, dude. I believe the hype now, man. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> this game is totally fun, dude. <laughs> Hell yeah, especially like playing with your bros or at least fighting each other. And we're playing with the Japanese guys. And we're like, oh, man, we we want this guy to be on our team because <laughs> he dominates. But other than that, yeah, I think it was just yesterday we were playing purely pvp matches uh -huh. and we were getting the hang of it and dude i don't know what it is but you're really good at sneaking up on people with the paint roller because i usually see that a mile away uh -huh. you know like people coming up but as soon as i turn the corner you're like steamrolling over me and i'm like <laughs> oh my god you know like i can kill all these people but for some reason you're just pretty good at that but anyways it's it was really fun just uh playing for five hours i don't even know how long yeah playing. we played for a while yesterday man no that game is super fun dude because i think it's it's familiar enough but it's different at the same time so yeah. it's like you know we're used to playing call of duty and destiny and the division all this shit where it's like a first person third person shooters where we're just trying to kill the enemies right this game has the exact same mechanics as all those games except your goal isn't to kill each other you know, it's to paint as much of the level as you exactly. can with your color, dude. So I think that's why I like it so much is like me, I don't really concentrate on killing you guys. If I'm killing you guys, it's because you're standing in your own paint <laughs> and I'm trying to paint over it. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I'm really because my main weapon, because I suck at aiming even on the switch. So my main weapon is this paint roller that you just roll on the floor and try to cover the whole map in your paint and shit um and yeah if i run into people with it that does them damage and they die super fast the only trick is i have to get close to them and actually like touch them with it you know there's actually one of the paint rollers i don't remember so there's you know of course there's all paint rollers but each one kind of does something a little different mm -hmm. but they all do the same thing at the same time but what I've seen was there's this one guy I could not kill for the life of me. And what he did is he does like a, sh a jump. And as soon as he does the jump, you know that splatter when mm. you – it changes the way you actually do that splatter. And it does like a long-range shotgun shot. What? And it always one hit kills me. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so crazy. It's like they mastered the art of that. So <laughs> just try that one time. Just do a jump and then – uh, do that that shotgun shot and yeah you'll see you'll go pretty far yeah. yeah yeah so and so the way that i kind of get around it without having that art of jumping and splashing people dude is by i put on perks to make me run fast dude if i'm in yeah. my own paint so of course i'm laying down my own paint in front of me and i could just you know run super fast in it um <coughs> but yeah dude that game's too fun man you guys annihilated me sometimes though when i would you would turn around and see me before I would get to you. You would just shoot me up before I get to you, dude. <laughs> and then just solo ulting me, man. Oh, that's so toxic, man. <laughs> <laughs> but the game is good times, dude. Uh, the stressful part that you're talking about is the the horde mode. <laughs> oh, <laughs> called Grisco. Grisco, yeah. <laughs> what is it? It's like your job to collect golden eggs or something, right? Yeah. <clears throat> and then so like every once in a while, I think every day, the map changes, the modes change too, especially when you're ranking up, you get promoted to different levels, it gets more and more harder to the point where, you know, you start seeing different types of crazy modes in there. But overall, your job is to collect these eggs and throw them in the basket. And, mm -hmm. you know, you have to meet a quota. But then, of course, there's always the, the enemies that hinder your performance. Uh, they spray everywhere, and sometimes they just spam a bunch of bosses <laughs> all at once. So you have to strategically you know, place yourself with your teammates to actually do all these, collect the eggs, at the same time fending off all the ads and everything. And there are strategy. And two, so I'll, you know how today we had certain weapons? Mm -hmm. There's also, it randomizes too. So like there might be another day when we have that same map again, but completely different weapons. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it's it's not all the same. We just had really bad choices. I guess with that sniper especially. Dude, it's so bad, man. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. And then there's good maps too where you're like 
you have to grind on a bunch of rails and stuff at the oh, same what? time like shooting yeah i don't know if you you've you've tempted it but you know those 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 lines that people shoot at you can actually ride it at a uh, either as a squid form or a regular human form. Oh, I think I've ridden it as a, a squid form. I've ridden one of them. There was one of the maps that you could go into and you end up like on the second like level of it or something like that. Yeah, if you just let go of your squid form, you actually start grinding and you can shoot while grinding. Oh, okay. Good to yeah. know. Yep. So, but, yep. Yeah, no, that game is super fun. A lot more fun that than i expected it to be dude again all i do is concentrate on painting the levels dude and it's so funny you know afterwards like the <laughs> results screen because it shows the entire map and what it's looked like you know and it gives you the percentage of whose team covered it up more but it always gives you suspense like it always goes to 25 percent on each side and then pauses for a split second and then it goes to what it actually is dude we had a couple <laughs> close games yesterday man where it was like two percent one percent that we lost by or we won by dude those are kind of crazy man the all the lowest i've ever done and it was like really rare it was 0.1 percent and we lost by 0.01 holy shit dude and i was i was like damn it man someone just had a space yeah their color dude <laughs> fart a little bubble and you know could have won <laughs> but yeah that's how i get like well I mostly rank one on average uh-huh. is i'm not killing nobody i'm actually just spraying the crap out of everywhere yeah. as much as i can so yeah, yeah. that's true the, the the um multiplayer system in the normal games is kind of wonky i mean yeah we can is. all join each other you know what i mean but we can't really join each other and be on the same team. I guess that's only in ranked mode. Yeah. But we could be in the same lobby. So I don't think there was you, Eric, Dustin, and I. We were all in the same lobby. But I don't think once we were all on the same team. I think we were all like mixed one or the other, 3-1, 2-2 uh, two, two in any kind of combination. Um, the funniest games were with there's people with like Japanese names, dude. You know what I mean? I think we're so yeah. intimidated, man. Like we think people with Japanese names are these like high level Japanese players, dude. That are just too good, man. <laughs> <laughs> dude, and and also if we want to be on the same team, we can play ranked match mm-hmm. and we can form a squad. And I don't know if Dustin tried it, but me and Eric attempted it and it's completely different it's not the same as where you go and uh, paint everything there's some where you have zone control there's some where you collect a lot of clams and it turns into a football and you have to throw the football in the enemy's goal what and yeah and then you throw clams in it so like yeah their ranks are completely way different that's crazy so. then then why don't they put that in normal games to help you practice for ranked matches that doesn't make sense dude I have no idea. I guess it's <laughs> good that you get an idea of how your perks work and everything. But oh, yeah, okay. other than that, it's completely different. We got wrecked playing the football <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like get down the perk system too. Because I can only unlock two for mine. And I see people have like four perks on their clothes sometimes. So what happens is they find a costume from people that they played with online and they just order it. Uh-huh. Or you can go into the store and sometimes they, they, you know, you see has multiple slot perks. And then there's also, if you competed in the event that just passed, but there's another event that's going to come up. Um, you can actually spend, I forgot, these seashells and it adds perks to each of your costumes. So you can have four completely. Ah, uh, cool. okay. So... Okay. Basically, collect the gear that you you like its look for, and mm-hmm. also its perk. Because there's some perks you can't actually uh, add on. So, like Ninja Swim, um, it's one of like a skill you can't inherit. But if you have it on, you know, your shirt or whatever, you can actually swim without, you know, uh, splashing around. Uh-huh. You know, like how you're in squid form. So that is a good perk. And then there's like stuff like Stealth Jump where 
Uh, I don't. It, so basically, when you spawn and you jump to another player, I don't know if you haven't tried it yet, but uh -huh. when you do, it shows the the landing point, and the enemy can see where you're gonna land. And what they do is they spam that area, and then as soon as you land, you know you get wiped oh, out. Oh, you die! Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's some where there's stealth jump, or there's some where uh, where it, when you jump, you have an option to roll left or right when you land. So, ah, okay, okay, interesting. Yeah. Okay, so I have to keep an eye out for for those perks then, the ones that can't be inherited or anything like that. But exactly. And they have like specific or they have like gear that's only available, let's say like during Christmas and things like that too. <laughs> I'm not sure. I, oh, I didn't really okay. see anything, but what I did see is like other people would be wearing it. And then I would, you know, all you have to do is just order it from them. And it costs like 20,000 gold if you want to buy it from them. Ah, uh, okay. You can order three so items. That's a lot of money. Sort of. You can earn that. Well, we've been gaining a lot of money from Grisco, so <laughs> we oh, should be true. good on that. that's true. I haven't paid that. attention. Yeah, I haven't paid attention to how much money we've been getting, actually. But that's funny. Yeah. I should check it out. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, dude. No, the game's super fun. Oh, and it's further... Uh, cemented the fact in my mind that the uh, Nintendo app is fucking useless, dude. <laughs> <laughs> because we needed to invite each other. I don't know why. I mean, you could totally just invite people in game. We could join each other in the normal games in, in Splatoon without using the app at all. But to play the co-op horde mode, we have to create a room in the Nintendo Switch app on the phone, dude and fight them and they have to have the app but to... it doesn't make sense because today when eric invited me into the lobby i just got the notification on my phone didn't touch my phone but i was in uh i jumped in grisco went to open lobbies and i saw the lobby so there's no fucking point for the phone app dude <laughs> nintendo what are you doing dude it's forcing you i think you know the nintendo probably threatened Splatoon people, they're like, you know, you better have some sort of implementation of our app or in there. <laughs> Otherwise, you're gone. <laughs> so now we have to have this poopy oh app. Oh, my and, God, dude. Yeah. That's bullshit, man. Yeah, there's no fucking point for it at all. We don't even use it for the voice chat, dude. We use friggin', what do you call it, man? Discord. We use Discord, which is way better anyways. But... Yeah, no, that's too funny, man. <laughs> Nintendo Switch app is completely useless. Because <laughs> sure, we you know, can all play together, but we have to get invited through the app. Which I don't think, does Eric make the invitation in the app or does he make it in the game? He makes, I think he makes it in the app and uh, then invites us in okay. the app and then we join through the game. Okay, okay, that makes sense then. That's too fucking funny, man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, dude. Um, what else, dude? You been playing any other games this week? Um, don't remember. <laughs> yeah, I uh, yeah, I don't think I've been playing other than Splatoon yeah. every day. Yeah, just that. Yeah, no, I think that's it for me too. I think a bunch of weebs play Splatoon. That's just my running theory. I'll have, I'll have <laughs> to investigate and uh, return with my updates later, dude. Um, but yeah, dude, that's pretty much it, dude. It's been a really fast and really sick episode of Hot Couch Potato, man. I think Rick and I are both, <laughs> I think I've made Rick sick and now we're both dying. It's not just me anymore, man. <coughs> no, no. <coughs> um, but yeah, it'll be, we'll see what, uh, don't make cries like next week man we'll see what the reviews are like dude and if rick buys it i bet you if the reviews are good you're gonna pick it up yeah uh yeah yeah definitely so we'll see comes out next friday we'll see what the reviews look like next week um but yeah i think that's it for us this week until then rick some words of wisdom if you want to beat everybody in tetris you can Press. I don't even know. I'm so sick now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. See you next week. <laughs>